call at 6 30. We'll call the meeting to order uh, for the October 6, 2021 budget committee meeting. Um, I'll start I didn't off. find any meetings about budget committee meetings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we know that already. <laughs> That's my problem. Um, so. Just a roll, roll call. Um, Jessica seems to be absent. Um, I see Kim is here, Angela is here, Aaron is here, Lynn Spring is here, Charlie Gore, Joe Dash is absent, actually he's excused. Um, Michelle is here, Peter's here, Pat is here, I'm here, and Denise is here. So um, just have Jessica absent and Joe uh, excused. Um, I'll start off by apologizing. I had a mix-up on my calendar, and this this meeting wasn't today, so I didn't invite the police chief and fire chief in time. They got the message yesterday, and both of them were engaged and could not come today. So um, Kim, as the select board ex officio, will present the, the current select board budget, and then we'll invite the fire chief and police chief to come in at another another meeting. We can ask them follow-up questions or um, if we need to. So, if, unless the, the will of the group is not to move forward, um, I, I, I would suggest moving forward as we plan. Okay. Um, let's start with a review of our minutes from the last meeting, which was September 29th. Do we have uh, a motion to review the minutes? Mm -hmm. Motion from Angela, second from um, Michelle. Um, any comments or questions on the minutes? So just a question for you. Are you asking us who Jack is on page two? Yeah, I had to catch his last name and I couldn't quite hear it on my recorder. So I was going to ask him tonight what it was. Boyle, B-O-Y-L-T. He's right on the <laughs> John Joseph. Perfect. Any other questions or suggested edits? So, um, all in favor of approving the minutes as that is revised. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the minutes are passed. Um, so we will. We have. We do have Dan here um, to give a presentation on the on the uh, town clerk budget. So Dan, if you want to come up to the, can you pull a chair up for make sure space for him? And, Thanks for coming on short notice. Oh, no problem. No problem. Uh, yeah, so um, I assume everybody has it in front of them. Um, so the, the changes to the budget, I'll just kind of go through those are the proposed budget. Um, this year we only had the uh, one election. Um, next year we're going to have a town election in March. Um, the state primary in September and then the state general election in November. So it's three, three elections. So that obviously is going to change um, any, uh, any of these line items related to elections. That's going to, you know, it times the, you know, the town clerk stipend, the ballot clerk's wages as well. Payroll taxes for elections, same thing there. Um, I went back to 2018 and there were three elections in 2018 and that's where I grabbed that um, number of, of 1968. Um, the ballot, the programming printing of ballots, um, anytime you um, run an election, there's um, we work with LHS associate, associates uh, to print our ballots and to program the, the, um, the ballot machine, um, counting machine. And um, so every election there's, there is a coding charge. We only have to print ballots for the town. Um, we get the state ballot supply. Um, so that, you know, obviously is different too. So, so, you know, because of the three elections versus the one election, we're obviously seeing an increase that we really can't do anything about because we have to run those three elections. Um, let's see here. Um, lunches, that, that's uh, lunches supplied to volunteers. Um, we had a pretty a uh, pretty good budget for that this year that we, we paid and we spent $160 uh, at the town election so I felt as though you know $200 per election is plenty um, so that's a little bit of a drop I and mean, of course it's times three 
Another change is the uh, inner wear development. So um, if you don't know, I started here in December of 2020. Um, and uh, there had already had been a movement away from the, um, the DMV has what's called the MAP software, M-A-A-P. Um, and we had been using that software to process motor vehicle transactions um, for as long as I know, I guess. Um, and there was already uh, a movement away from that to get this uh, interwear development um, to bring in this Clerkworks uh, program. Uh, so that program was already here when I arrived. Um, so what we've been able to do since I arrived is take advantage of more of the features of the Clerkworks uh, software. Um, just recently, maybe three weeks ago, we went to online uh, vehicle renewals. And they're, starting to, they're starting to come in. I've done maybe like 12 of them since. You know? So it gives the townspeople uh, a really nice option. One of the big complaints is, you know, you're you never open when I'm when I'm available. You know, well, you know, if you have to just renew your vehicle, you can do it online. Um, you can also do, you know, do your dog licenses online. Um, so, so this is a nice feature um, that that I did some research, and most towns our size are already have already been doing this for a while. So I think we we're a little late to the late to the party on it. Um, so anyway, so so yes. You see in that line item there. I mean, that's that's quite a bit more than what we had before. Like I said, this was already a program that was um, agreed upon and, and brought in, you know, before I even got here. Um, so anyway, so so that's uh, that's paying for the support that they give. Um, they're, they're they're a lot more accessible. Um, well, I shouldn't say a lot more accessible, but they're 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 easier to get access to than than the help desk at the DMV. Um, sometimes you'll call in the middle of a, of a shift here and you'll be the 11th caller in line at the DMV, which is not very helpful. Um, so the, the support is, is um, you know, they're, they're, more, they're more accessible and they're really, they're really great too. I've, I've, uh, you know, all the people that they have working for them are really helpful and they know, they, they know, they know the program inside and out. I'm finding that I'm having to, you know, call less because I'm getting to know it more too. Um, but anyway, so so that um, that offers a lot, I believe, a lot more uh, to our townspeople than, than the map um, uh, software, which is, is kind of um, it's kind of like getting lost in a labyrinth sometimes. I guess I would describe it with, with their software. Um, whereas this interface and everything is right in front of you, and um, it's it's very very easy to use once you once you once you're trained and you understand how to use it. Um, so anyway. So there's that. Um, and, and then, of course, uh, the town clerk stipend. Um, there's obviously a, an increase uh, on the proposed anyway. Um, I had written a letter to the select board, and it's, it's in the Google Drive folder. Um, I do have some copies of it here. I don't know if I can pass them out, I guess. Um, I don't have enough for everyone, unfortunately. I, you know, I can just pass this around, I guess. But uh, I just wanted to kind of just give, I think there's a lot of, um, with some people there's some confusion as to exactly what a town clerk does. And, um, you know, to tell you the truth, before I became a town clerk, I didn't know what a town clerk did. I mean, I know I knew that they handled elections in some way, and I know that I knew that they handled um, Motor vehicle transactions, but I really didn't know the full scope of it. Um, so you know, it's there's a lot involved. There's a lot of um, there's some major things, there's some minor things, but there's a there's a lot going on. Um, you know, uh, so and it is a, a stipend. I'm not I'm, I'm not an employee of the town. It's an elected position. Um, you know, I don't have any benefits whatsoever. Um, I just have this stipend. Um, I do get extra um, extra money for each election, um, but generally that the stipend is, is that's 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 my compensation right there. Um, so we're open 20 hours a week uh, to the public. Um, I would will never only work 20 hours because of um, you know coming in to set things up, pulling, getting the computers going, getting the programs ready for people to come in. Um, and then after 
uh, there's there's a close up where I have to you know make sure all the numbers are matching up and um, you know and, uh, endorsing the checks and getting the deposits ready. Um, so that can take you know 15, it's probably on average 15, 20 minutes at the end of the day. If if there's if I've done a lot of business, if there's a if there's a you know some sort of error I'm trying to figure out, it might take a like half hour. And then I go to the bank twice a week. Um, that's Tuesdays and uh, Tuesday nights and Friday on the afternoon. So I would say on average, you know, I'm working about 25 hours a week. Um, so that's where I'm getting this number in, in the letter that I wrote. Um, just kind of breaking it down as, you know, currently this year with the, um, the stipend and the $300 for the election, um, I'm just under $20 an hour. You know, so this, this number here is based on uh, $22 per hour. So uh, 22 times 25 is where I get the 28.6. Um, so, so yeah, let me think here. And, and, you know, in the election time requires more hours of work, um, you know, the lead up to the election, the immediate aftermath of the election. Um, there's a lot of things that are required. Um, you know, I have to be heavily involved in, um, you know, getting the ballots printed, making sure the ballots have, you know, all the information we need on them, making sure they're correct, um, working with the uh, LHS associates, um, you know, testing the ballot machine. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot involved with the elections and that's just going to get more, of course, next year is going to three. So anyway, any questions? So, yeah, I think that Denise okay. had a question. Sure. The, um, the info system, um, does that allow more than one person to be able to do the motor vehicles at the same, at the same time, which the vehicle department did not. Right? Yeah, I believe because I know that I, I, you know, I have my username, and then Chuck has a username. Chuck is train our bookkeeper mm -hmm. is trained to to use Clerkworks, and, and he, you know, he has used it not nearly as much as I have, but you but know, he can do it at his, his own workstation versus. I believe so. Okay. I, I believe that's a, so. That's we a never have thing. we yeah. never have done it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but right. but I'm almost positive I can check on that. But I'm pretty sure. Well, as long as so, two people can have two different usernames versus just using somebody else's username and having another person using that as yeah, well, it's kind of right. not good. Right. So I'm glad to see that yeah. this is... I mean, well, you know, before, I mean, Chuck has been very busy lately, you know, uh, with other things, but um, he would get in the habit of, he'd come in, you know, early and he would run through some renewals under his name. And mm -hmm. then I would, then he would close out, then I would come in and plug my name in and then I would get prepared and, and then go through the rest of the shift. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, but, but I, you know, both processing motor vehicle transactions at the exact same time, I think we can, but I just, we've never done it, and, I, and I'd have to look into it more. Okay, not urgent. Okay. Yeah. Michelle, do you have a question? Is the um, development fee, you said, that, you know, they uh, provide support, et cetera, mm -hmm. is that an annual fee? They, or is this Yes, just... the, um, they provided this to me uh, which was kind of nice around for budget season time. Basically, this is what they will charge us for the year. They, they gave us like kind of a pre-invoice um, for the for the year of, of their support. And so uh, every year it's the... It would the, be this. It's okay. 25, 27, right. Okay. right. Um, so I, I guess I had the wrong impression of the system. I thought it was a system that would allow um, residents to go in and do their own um, renewal. Well, they can go in and, and basically it's a way for them to pay online, you know. So they go in and they pay, um, they, it's an e-check system, they, they plug in their checking account number and their routing number, and then I get an email and I, I go into the system and it shows you know, a list of people who have done that, and then I check to make sure that all the numbers look right. And then um, I just print the checks, and then I then we still have to process them through. But that is a very simple process. You know, the, a renewal is like, I mean, one renewal, maybe three minutes. You know. And so, so how how do they then get their renewal? Is it mailed to them? Mailed. Yep. Okay. Is it? Um, and what about the cost of mailing? It's uh, we put in. Um, there is a fee that's a, that's attached to each transaction. Okay. Um, Currently, it's a dollar eighty-five. You know, uh, but that's something we could we could bump up in time if we wanted to. You know. So all it really does is let them pay online and reduce traffic here. Yeah, it reduces traffic. It, it offers um, 
another option for people, you know, that, that just, you know, they, they, their work schedule makes it difficult for them to get here. Um, you know, a lot of people wait to the last minute. You know, last Thursday was September 30th, and it was the busiest day I've had here in a long time. Um, and, um, you know, just, just to, you know, cut down on traffic, especially also, God forbid, we have to shut down again. You know, because of this pandemic or another pandemic, you know, God forbid. Um, you know, having this in place would make everyone's life a lot easier. Um, when I came in, we were closed. And the process of, tr of having people, I mean, the Dropbox works pretty well. Um, but inevitably, um, you have people who, uh, you know, switch the amounts. They give the town, you know, amount. Uh, to the state and the state amount to the town, and I have to, and I have no phone number, and it's like and I have to write them a letter, you know. So there's a lot of that that goes on. Um, whereas the online, there, you know, it's it's all loaded in the DMV. All the numbers are there. They just simply put in their checking account information and hit enter, and it's all sent to us. So it it, it weeds out a lot of that the human error, um, which is nice. Which saves time in the end. How long is our? I'm sorry. How long is our commitment to this? I'm just wondering. That's, like you yeah. did a pilot for the first year and right, see right, how much. Right, right, right. That's a good question. I, I'll have to look into that. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I know that it came. Usage. It we went to. Me. We've been using it for dogs for quite a while, but we decided to. Well, say we. Before <coughs> I was here, uh, they decided to um, bring in the vehicles as well. Um, but but it's been the the, the dog uh, software for many years I believe. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure about the commitment. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. We should look into it. Yeah, just my, my point is if you yep. get 100 people that use it in a year, what is the value of 1,600 or 2,500 dollars a year really worth it? And are we committed to that? Mm -hmm. Angel, you had a question. So okay. Could be faulty memory here. Sure. But just a little confusion. So when I was looking at this spreadsheet, on line 27, next to elections and registrations, there's a number, $26,702, which I don't think belongs there. <coughs> it's yeah, not related to me. On, I don't see it on mine, but I printed out. I'm not looking at a printout. I'm looking at what was sent to us. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Column, yeah, sure. In column G, two, uh, 2018. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so it looks like it just went which, it, it looks it like probably to me like it's it's Oh, yeah, I see, I see it. I'm sorry. It, yeah, it brings the total to $59,000, which I don't think that budget was ever $59,000. But anyway, yeah. so what do you right. It's yeah. 2018 column. Oh, yeah. So I think that was, yeah, I like, mistake. it doesn't belong oh, that there. Right. Yeah, I, I, that's oh, yes. the first idea. Yeah, that was, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, all right, that was one thing. And then I looked at the approved appropriation for the town clerk stipend in 2020. So I'm kind of going back just so that we have some kind of like apples and apples comparison. Mm -hmm. And the, again, forgive me, faulty could be faulty memory, but I do not remember approving a $1,200 budget for stipend. In fact, we had a lot of discussion about it. And the request, I think, was for $600 in 2019. And that would have been the high end because that was a four elections a year, and that was, the request there was for like $200 an election, which we did not approve. We, I think we approved, um, I think we approved three or 400. We did, certainly, it was, it was more than 200, but it definitely was, was not more than 400, because 600 was requested. So then the 2020 appropriation doesn't look consistent with well, any that, number. Well, I, wasn't there, there were four, weren't there four elections in 2020? Mm -hmm. There were four elections 300. in 2019. 2020, we were, we didn't do anything. We had one town election in June, I think, because it was delayed. It's, well, 2020, it's so confusing, too, because of pandemic year. But I think 2019 was the general election year, right? No. Um, 2020. 2020. 2020. Okay, 2020. All right, sorry. But it was never twelve hundred dollars. It seems to me it would be three hundred times four because I believe it, it wasn't three hundred times four though. It we didn't approve that. So I think that number is just not. It doesn't feel right to me, and I'm just trying I, um, to just remember. Just a point. We, we can check on what it 
what it used to be, and we, we'll have chances to look at this again, but just remember that we have bottom line. We don't approve like a, a line yeah, item yeah. per line item. We, we approve a bottom I line item. I understand that. Yeah. We get into the top. Others get into a discussion of specific line items. Okay. I'd like the opportunity to do that because I'm confused about that number. And if we look at 900 for 2021, at three times three hundred dollars, I don't believe that I, the budget committee had a long discussion a couple of years back about what it would be during election year, and it wasn't that much. So you know, I'm just looking at some consistency sure. here. Sure. Okay. Sure. So, but if you don't want to go that route, I apologize. Well, no, no we can. I think we can yeah, with just sort of digging into the back. Background to answer the question. I don't know, know that we have the answer, is what I'm getting at. Yeah, and especially since my memory around what year I'm talking about is a little bit faulty, but it was 2020 and it just seemed very high. So it's hard to compare this to that, mm -hmm. is uh, just my concern. There's, it's 1200. We don't have to spend more time on it. It's a comment more than anything yeah. else. Yeah. In the annual report, it's twelve hundred. So I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened there. Was it? Yeah, no, you weren't. You weren't. Um, okay. Any other I questions for Dan on the? About that. Mm -hmm. so. I have one question. Sure. Dan, on the the software, do I understand it correctly that you can you use that to process all of? The renewals, like if people walk in, are you still using that same software? It, it's all we use. So it's not just yeah. for the online. No, no, no. You've no. added it's, that. We use it for everything. We we actually can't use the maps software anymore. Well, now that we've gone to that, you know. And um, I did some research. There are about I, I looked into about thirty, well, thirty one or thirty two towns that are around the same size population wise as Rawlinsford and. Um, I'm just going off my memory here, uh, but an overwhelming majority of them have online transactions through Interware. You know, Interware is like, I don't know if they have a monopoly on it, but, but it's getting there. You know, um, this is, yeah, I mean, m most, most towns our size use Clerkworks and they're doing online registrations. Um, so I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. Thank you. Yeah. Another question. Dan, how many registrations, I know you've only been here since December, but do you have a handle on how many registrations we do in this town? What, um, what time frame? Like what kind of time For frame? For a year. For a year. Oh, uh, well, I'd have to i have to compile that, but I can tell you that... Um, Is it 2,000? Is it less than 2,000? I can tell you that in November there are... Um, 284 renewals in November coming up. Okay, that. is that a particularly heavy month? That's about average. Okay, so average. We do 2400. June, June is particularly is heavier, like over 300. So if we're doing 2400 registrations a year, this is the software's a little over a dollar a uh, transaction. I don't see how it's much of a, a expense. Yeah, and considering how not, much time it saves, right, you're not on the does, phone, on a hold, your your accounting yeah. is better, you know. Uh, that doesn't include the renewals, that doesn't include new registration, people coming in with you know, new vehicles, transferring sure. over. Sure. I mean, uh, uh, you know, but uh, you still use that software to do it. For everything. And you're at 2,400 registrations a year on average, mm -hmm. based or, on your guess. Right, right, right. Uh, very, you know. That's just informative, yeah. you know. Yeah. For it, it, it's, yeah. it's probably good, too, because all these other towns are using it, so they're going to enhance the software on an ongoing sure. basis yeah. and do new releases. Yeah. So you'll get the advantage of that. Of course, I, the subscription rate's going to go up. There are more features. What, one feature that I have not taken advantage of yet, but I'm planning to, is um, on line 36 on supplies, we we pay. Um, it's not a lot, but we um, we pay the DMV to produce our renewal letters that go out to all the residents. Mm -hmm. um, we can do those in house and won't have to pay the DMV anymore. They just have to 
may happen in the planning to. They beat me to it. They, if it's cost effective, why not? Yeah, I mean, we'll say, I mean, you know, like that's that line item is, um, you know, $1,000 and that's the, the ink cartridges go in. But I mean, I could shave some off of that by, by going in. And that's my plan is to move in that direction. Um, they just keep beating me to the punch because the, the renewal letters arrive from the DMV before I have a chance to switch it over. Probably if there was greater awareness, more people would use it. Sure. Um, if there's greater awareness, more people yes. will probably use it. You mean it. of the online renewals? Yeah. Yeah, the, each renewal, the, the last two renewal letters that have gone out, we've attached a, a neon sticker saying that now you can renew online. Um, you know, it's on it's front and center on the website. Um, I'm planning on having Tia put out a past at some point, you know. And I think word of mouth, too. I mean. I tell people when they come in, you know, this is an option. You yes. know. Um, I think it's great. I think for the younger folks, too, I mean, they're just, this is the way they conduct their business. You know, um, I have a lot of great stories about young people trying to write checks over there and not knowing how, you know, um, <laughs> I mean, coach them through it, you know. Then um, they don't teach that in school yeah, anymore. I have young <laughs> folks who have uh, signed the check on the back of the check where you endorse it. <laughs> this is not helpful. Don't you take Bitcoin? <laughs> We're not there yet, though. We better talk to the school department on this because, you know, <laughs> it's definitely a shortcoming. <laughs> Dan, with apologies to you, I recognize, I remember what my error is here now. Mm -hmm. It was an increase to $300 per election. So yeah. that does make sense for four okay. elections that year. So I apologize. I was That's no apologies confused necessary. confused about the per election amount mm -hmm. of money that was requested and then awarded. Okay, any other questions on the town clerk budget? Um, so just so you know, there um, the budget that you have and what Dan has proposed, um, there is a difference um, on the salary request. Okay. Um, the select board um, reviewed it and we felt that based on um, Dan's experience, um, having less than a year, because um, he'd originally asked for a, a 12% increase, um, and the budget committee's proposed budget, which is not final, um, changed it to a 3% increase. Select boards. Select boards, sorry. Select boards um, proposal. Um, you know, just, you know, we understand that um, this Dan came in at the salary range of, of a very senior person who had 20 years of experience. Um, so we considered that and um, that he has less than a year of experience. Um, and we felt a market adjustment or an adjustment was in order, um, just not at 12%. Um, however, the budget is not final. Um, at all. And, you know, we're hoping to actually get input from the budget committee on, um, on bottom line recommendations. So. Okay. Thanks for that clarification. And, uh, and no other changes, though, other than that. That was no. the only change okay. that we, uh, we found. Any other discussion or thoughts on clerk's budget? I think we can move on to the next one. And Dan, if you want to mm -hmm. stick around, you can, but you're welcome to, I have to a, head home. I have a 10 year old celebrating her 10th birthday. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, oh awesome. 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 no longer having any single digit children. Oh. It's kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. All right. We'll see you. So let's move this kind of in order on the list to the police, which I think is next. Um. So I'm probably not going to go through line by line as, um, as John might have because he has a lot more detail about the budget. Um, I will, uh, let's see here. So I will explain um, a couple of the changes. Um, so we were we didn't make any adjustments um, to the police budget because the police budget came in at a negative $906, um, well, a decrease of $906. Um, and so when we first started talking about budgets, and actually Miles was still on the budget committee, 
one of the things that we asked the departments to consider was that they do a very small increase or a flat budget. Well, that didn't happen um, because I think everybody asked for all market adjustments this year. And when, um, when I kind of tallied up the market adjustments and what the impact was, it was about $52,000 in market adjustments across all the departments. Um, so the one budget that didn't um, ask for an increase was the police. And they were able to make that work by um, adjusting staffing to some degree and, and reallocating some of the full-time salaries um, to bring up um, the current officers um, to what is more in line with market data. And John provided a full market, um, a spreadsheet of all of the towns in the state of New Hampshire uh, with all of the different positions, uh, from patrol all the way up to sergeant um, and chief, for that matter. And so we had a, a lot of data to look at when we looked at what he was proposing for his officers. Um, so what we've described here in the notes in terms of increases for the officers was very much in line with what the state um, showed for market rates for the police officers. Um, so, so really, um, he worked through, we worked through this budget together, and he was able to keep it um, flat, um, and yet plan for retention and recruitment for the positions that he feels he needs to have in order to run the, the uh, department. Um, so, so any questions about um, the salary information for the for the chief and also for the um, officers? Okay, is everybody up? To, uh, are we fully staffed now? Or are we, we, we are. We are fine. Mm -hmm. We're yeah, fine. It took yeah. a while. Mm -hmm. It did. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's it's tough. I don't think I, I feel like most. People don't want to be police officers anymore. Um, so they, it was a long... Uh, long I, was <laughs> I, I think we'll be effective after the first of the year because they're all going through training right now. Yeah, they go to the academy or something? Yeah. Yeah, there's one at the academy and one going on the training. Yeah, yeah. Two, two in the academy yeah. now. Oh. Oh, no, go ahead, Michelle. Go ahead. Um, I had a question for... I'm trying to see my line numbers here. 113, 114, and 115. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't see there was nothing in the budget for 21. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And so where did that money come from if he's got a decrease rather than me try to fix it and find it? You will um, know quickly. So um, in the, it actually probably came out of full time salaries. If you look at the full time salaries, it was a reduction of $68,000. Um, oh, actually, I'm sorry, that's for next year. Um, but full-time salaries is um, only, spent, well, at $132,000 right now. So he, um, based on his current budget, he planned for that, but also those positions are potentially eligible for ARPA funds. Um, the American Rescue Plan um, provides for staffing as well. So his intent was to probably use some ARPA funds as well. So these are positions? They are. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sorry, follow-up question. So if, if he cut 68000 off his budget, which, you know, God bless his little soul there, um, how, because I know they've had issues with having enough people, so if he's fully staffed, sort of, right, it sounds mm -hmm. like, yeah. how is the budget that much less? If he's got everybody he needs, um, I would think it would be a. He, he took out. He took out a position. Yes. Right. And it still gives him enough coverage. Yep. We talked about scheduling and how he was going to staff it, and he had a scheduling plan as well. Okay. Yeah. That's great. So. And so that, what he's, um, it looks like his overtime is up quite a bit, and that's how he's covering. Eliminating that other. Uh, well, ha not having the um, full, being fully staffed, right? Yeah. They only had to work. I'm not supposed to say that. They they weren't fully staffed. Yeah. But, so they were using overtime. But by eliminating that position, he is going to be paying overtime. 
a lot more overtime to the people that are there, yeah. even though yeah. his overall yeah. number is in, in place, his overtime mm -hmm. number is, high, is much higher according to this. He has two new officers though. Mm -hmm. um, so next April, I think they're going to be done the academy next April. So um, he'll be, he'll have five officers at that time. See, they, they go into the field in January, but they still have to ride with somebody. Oh, I see. So there's a, a learning curve that they go through. Oh, I they see. go through the academy and then they go through uh, a field like three months so they ride with someone mm -hmm. before they can go out on their own. I see. Thank you. Angela, did you have something? Well, it was just um, the, you know, it's 50, the budget is 54% spent at this point, but we're three quarters of the way through the year. So my questions sort of related to these questions about salary because it seemed it was in the same line, um, one, line 110 uh, is 49%. But, so I think it's the same conversation as trying to understand. Uh, I think it's a per, you know, just staffing issue. Three instead of five. Any other questions about those lines? So what is prosecution? Like, what, why is that a, a new line item? Um, so, <clears throat> Jack, do you, did you talk to him about that at all? Yeah, they, we have a prosecutor. <clears throat> they that, hired a, a partner. They, ha they have a prosecutor that works for the town. Okay. That before does the, cases. Yeah, before the chief and, and the lieutenant were doing the prosecution. But now we no longer have a chief, and the lieutenant was trying to do that as well as his regular duties. Um, so, and he just, you know, didn't... And, and it's not full-time. And he's also yeah. in the rotation in terms of um, working, um, patrolling. Yeah. I see. Any other questions? Um, no, no. Okay. Um, I assume the professional development number that's that's gone up is, is because the new, uh, new officers, so. Yes. Yeah, we got to pay for them in the academy, but. Mm -hmm. um, data storage is uh, for body cams. Um, so body cams are in the SIP for this year. two officers in academy and um, anticipated increase in fuel um, because we will have more officers on the road. So a, a, a lot of these are increases due to the being locally staffed. Ammunition and uniforms. Michelle? Kevin, yeah, tonight there's probably nothing um, that you can do, but is there anything to keep? Officers, because we do a lot of academy. I mean, I've sat on this committee. You have to. Um, we spend a lot of money on the academy, and people kind of come and go. And is there nothing, you know, as a you have to stay for a year? Or you have there, to there stay is a for commitment. Two years? There, there, there is some sort of commitment. I don't know what it is, but there is something. Three years. Three years. Okay, so there is something. Yes. Yeah. And and that was kind of John's motivation too, and especially bringing up um, Officer Hancock and Brooks, um, you know, to make them more in line with some of the other towns of their size. Um, you know, unfortunately, retention is part of that. Um, so you keep the American Rescue Plan, like how long, I don't know, like how much 
much long do we have that money for? So is it like next year we're going to have a huge increase, or is it? No, it's um, so I think we have to make commitments to projects by 2024, and that has to be expended by 2026. I think those are the years. I think that was the I, think I think that's right. Yeah. And that's being used in a lot of ways. So, I mean, and it's yes. only 250,000. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's some pretty big asks from water right. sewer for some of that money. And we have our, our, our own dispatch. We don't leverage uh, like Stratford County, correct? I think they dispatch to Dover. No, they, they're in Stratford now. Stratford? Oh, they are Stratford? So this is they're, they're in Stratford. to Stratford? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that would be a general question. Or, uh, what was the question? Okay, on the dispatch. Dispatch of Stratford County to the police? So that's Dover our... Dover fire does fire. Right. Okay. So that's our contribution here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? And, and we will try to get uh, John in here yeah. to uh, he can give you more detail. answer detailed questions. Sure. Put it over. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and similarly, we'll move on to the fire department budget. Um, so <laughs> the fire department budget. Um, so we, we had um, we had some discussions about the um, the salary increases they were requesting, and you know we've asked for and we are getting um, additional information about how they're compensated because it's never been clear to me how they're compensated. Um, so we've gotten some information about that, and we have um, a little bit more to collect. Um, so they we didn't make any adjustments to those lines. Um, but again, the, the budget's not final, uh, because I really think that we need to talk about the bottom line and where we're at now, and where the budget committee is hoping to be, um, in terms of the impact for the year, for the whole town budget. So uh, the only adjustment that was made was to radio equipment, and um, so that they had budgeted for three radios in line 154. Um, and so as, as part of the negotiation, and, and Jack is our um, negotiator, do you want to talk about that, Jack? Yeah, we, uh, um, the chief and I chatted, and we decided to take it down from 15 to 10, and he opted up the five. That they, they got enough of the radios changed out, and they think they're on a good plan to be able to move forward with, with the, what they have right now. Yeah, and I think they must have gotten at least three radios um, this year, um, based on where they're expended right now. So they're actually uh, um, overexpended this year on that line. So I'm going to guess they got three, if not more. Uh, I thought they were around five thousand dollars a piece, Jack. Wasn't that correct? Five. Three. I thought it was three. To be honest. Oh, so maybe they got five radios. Well, three for some and one. Five thousand. Um, so we didn't make any other adjustments um, to that budget. It's pretty flat when you look at it. Michelle? Kim, it says um, the mutual aid line, because community mutual aid is disbanding, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Because I know the chief has talked about mutual aid and how important it is. And I think they joined another group. Um, so this, he said this group is disbanding, but I believe they're part of another group. Which he, apparently there's no cost to. He he could probably explain yeah. that to better. So hold those questions for when we get them in. One of the issues we discussed last year had to do with the formula for compensation. Was it was it a, a per event or per call. Uh, that's what I'm trying to. I think that's what Kim is saying. Yeah, it's yes, per we, call. Yeah. We actually per call. A, we have a presentation that they gave us um, and that explains how it's calculated. I'm happy to share that with the budget committee so you have a better understanding, but it's a point based system. Um, and depending on the position, you, you gain a point or maybe two points. Um, but I can, I can share that with you guys. So. I think that would be really helpful because it's always been a bit 
I'm a black kind box. of understand it, but, yeah. but yeah. I don't right. totally. So I think uh, if you could get Sean to come in and give you a presentation, that would be really good mm -hmm. because he did a nice job. He did. He put, a, he put together a present um, a PowerPoint that described it. So Sean was good. So I can't go into all the details of the lines, but um, I can try to answer any questions that you have about it or um, take any comments you have. I think they were, it was over the last few years, they were purchasing a lot of equipment, so it sounds like they're caught up to some degree. A lot of infrastructure was happening and uh, updates with the facility. Yes, uh, they've done a lot. So they've done a lot. Is there any, I mean, uh, maybe that's a SIP issue, but is there any big infrastructure going forward they need done? Yeah, they have a ventilation system yeah. that they have, and uh, I think it was in SIP for like 75000 and the meeting we have with them, they think they can get it down to fifty. Okay. That, um, so I, that was kind of mentioned with that excess last, uh, the last meeting that, you know, we are hoping that we could maybe use it towards the rooms. Oh. So cook for those those sips part funds towards roads. Okay. Um, and then there's the vehicle wash system, which I think is also going to be covered under ARPA. Then they had the tank fill system, correct? Oh, uh, uh, the fill system. Okay. That's complete? That's mm -hmm. in place? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it looks like it. Okay, that's great. Come a long way. Other questions about the fire department budget? I gotta get a ride around some of those trucks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I noticed both in the police and fire that the, the phones and cell phones that's going up is not a lot of money, but I'm just curious what, what's behind that, you know. Um, I know for the police, because um, I'm the police liaison, that um, the chief was hoping that um, um, Officer Hancock or Sergeant, sorry, um, would be able to carry a cell as well. So there's an additional cell in his budget. I don't know about John's, I didn't, I'm sorry, Mark's, I didn't really go into detail with him about it, and I don't think he went into detail about it either. It's not a big argument. If we could schedule them in, that would be good. took over the emergency, I, uh, I, I don't know what the name is. Yes, I, I can explain that as important at the time. He became, uh, the police chief has always been the emergency management director, and when Bob um, retired, the emergency management director uh, responsibilities went to the fire chief. In reality, most of your towns and cities, the emergency medical, uh, emergency um, director is the fire department, not the police department. I'm not sure why for years it was with the police, but we moved it. So that means that if there's any disaster in town, he's responsible and be and also preparing his staff on scenarios of something that might disaster train derailment or any of those kind of things. Um, so his hours are increased a little bit by doing taking over that position. Also, I, I mentioned though that also the fire chief is now not in the point system, it's the salary. We changed that last year when he was appointed versus elected. So that is what he'll get the full year. Any questions on the fire department proposed budget? Um, so I would like to open it up. Um, I feel it's important that you know we take input from the budget committee about um, what 
where you would like to be at the end of the year at the bottom line because the budget as it stands with um, the reductions that we've talked about with the town clerk, um, highway, transfer station, um, still leaves us at a 5% bottom line increase, um, which is an increase of about $122,000 over last year. Um, we don't have everything in there yet. We do not have it. We haven't right. been through all of the budgets. So this is really kind of early so we still discussion. got a wreck. Right. So recreation plus um, town administration executive office, um, tax collector, um, and some of the non-departmental things. Um, so I was hoping to kind of hear from the budget committee what they feel they could live with for a bottom line increase for the year. premature since we haven't seen everything. I think what we what we did last year, and I'm not sure, I don't think you were in on those meetings, is we, we went through so the bottom line built, you know, based on bottom line budget estimating like, like we're doing here. And then we looked back and said, okay, um, let's go with suggestion. It looks like we're underspending each year by a certain percentage. Let's let's drop, you know, because we're overspending, we obviously and it's hard. You fill it up by line item by line item, and that's yeah. the only way you can do it. Um, but at the end of the day, we know we're going to be over budgeting, so that's why we pulled back at the end. But I think it was two percent or something like that. Seventy thousand. Is that is that what it is? That's what it was. Seventy thousand. Yeah. They cut it. I mean, because I I look at we got to get the whole thing together, and then we got to look at it and maybe cull it down. Yeah, and that's basically what we did. Is, yeah. is, you know. You look at the line by line, and, and just as now, we can comment on them individually, but when you see the whole thing right. at once, then you look at where we've been the past years, yeah. and, you know. That, and that, that's what I've actually said to the people that we've been meeting with, with the heads. I'm saying, none of this is cast in concrete, you know. We, we've got to look at this a lot longer. I think the, <coughs> the rubric that we used, Joe brought up, was, you know, what's our actuals? Uh, we're a ways away from getting the actuals for the year, but once we get a closer picture of what the actuals are, okay. and then compare that with the proposed budget, we're going to be probably thinking that we know what we're going to need to do with the proposed budget at that point. Isn't that how we arrived yeah. at um, our recommendation last year? Yeah. So, so projecting. Yeah. So we're going to need to see the fourth quarter. Well, we'll be at third quarter. We'll third quarter. quarter but yeah. Anyway, and then project from there. Yeah. Um, and hopefully the accounting has caught up enough so that. Well, the so the year-to-date expenditures are in here now um, for end of quarter. Um, Chuck did give those to me uh, before he went on vacation, and I did put in the numbers. So that is accurate. So last year, um, the bottom line only increased by two hundred and six dollars. Was what? Two hundred and six dollars. Um, this year we're at one hundred and twenty-two thousand. So hard to look at this in isolation from the no. revenue side. Right. Uh, well, I can also give you updated revenue as well. Um, I think Caroline just did that recently, um, but Chuck gave me uh, the profit and loss statement the other day, so I can make sure that's up to date as well. So that'd be great. To um, I think we're down with revenue, though. I think we're down with revenue. I, I, did you, do you remember, Jack? I haven't looked at it. No, I think we are down. So, so is, is it, can I ask a question just to clarify? Okay. Is the process that we use, the third quarter actuals, and then we go back to the heads and ask them for an estimate for the fourth quarter? Is that I don't know how she managed that before. Um, yeah. I'm sure we can get probably get monthly. I mean, so we kind of have some sort of something. We've been roughly just projected. What we did last year was kind of projected and said, and there were some light items that, that may have been a, you know, maybe it hadn't come, the bills hadn't come through necessarily yeah. yet or something like that. But, but generally we use the, we're at seventy-five percent. Project that we're going to have to be twenty-five percent more by the end of the year, and it wasn't that precise. Okay. Um, not to say that we couldn't be more precise if the department heads wanted to give a prediction, but that's. that's we can do that. 
can try to get in the uh, October expenses updated here as well um, in revenue. Yeah, our, our next meeting, which is on the 20th, is the quarterly budget review meeting. So that, that'll be a chance to go through where we are for expenditures and, and kind of look at So, um, yeah, so I wanted to make sure we were having the next meeting for the 20th on our calendars. Um, and other than what Tim just brought up, is there any other business that anybody would like to bring up? Joe's not here, so of course you're not. <laughs> if that's a quarterly review, are you going to consider putting some fire there as well? That's okay, a good so idea. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Have them be at the beginning of it, yeah. then we can do the review. I think that's, a, that's an excellent suggestion, Denise. <laughs> now you have their email addresses too. Yeah, I do have their email addresses now, I'm, uh, and I will address that tomorrow. And I'll send a note out to everybody just updating what's coming up. So, uh, with no other business brought up, do um, so I have a motion to adjourn? Motion from Aaron and a second from Michelle. All in favor, say aye. aye. aye.